in service of thanksgiving for the life of our friend and brother and husband and grandfather called Brian Mackenzie. Today we are here to celebrate. It's a day of celebration for his life. And as we come to celebrate, we pray God's blessing on his wife and other members of the family that they will be strengthened by the power of our Heavenly Father. And as we begin this memorial service, we begin with the tributes as printed in our order of service. First tribute, Miss Tanisha Anderson, up in our early childhood. Second tribute, Telephone Company. Third tribute, Andrea Darlington, daughter. Then we have the remembrance and the tribute to come in that order. So I now invite Miss Tanisha Anderson to come with her tribute at this time. Tribute to Carla Brian McKenzie from the Hanover's Early Childhood Development Center. I am standing here this morning with mixed feelings. A feeling of grief and sadness, but also a feeling of pride. I am proud to have known and interacted with such a kind and honest human being. The Aperos family was blessed to have Mr. Mackenzie, Uncle Mac, Mr. Mac, as he was called at school, around us daily. To our school family, Uncle Mac was our carpenter, plumber, mason, electrician, and the list goes on. No matter how big or small the problem, Mr. Mack would ensure that it was fixed. He was present at all school functions, whether it is our graduation or even school day. Mr. Mack would be seen walking around, ensuring that things were in place, and of course, cracking the joke here and there with everyone. Mr. Mackenzie was a man of principle, which kept us on our P's and Q's. Although sometimes not seen, Mr. Mack would always be listening to us teaching, and at the end of our lesson, he, of course, would often give his input, suggestion, and even corrections where necessary, which was always welcome. Spanish was his area of expertise, and he was always delighted to relate the correct pronunciation of a word and would jokingly say, Remember, some writing up is over in high school I used to call. Each teacher had their fondest memory of Mr. Mackenzie, as he impacted our lives in different ways. Apart from being a disciplinarian, he was also very humorous. Due to the pandemic, teachers worked from home. However, the nursery staff and secretary were at school daily. And of course, they had the privilege of seeing Mr. Mac every day, even the day before his passing. Auntie Crystal and Auntie Belanda remembers him visiting the nursery occasionally to check if things were okay and would always give them something to laugh about before leaving. They both remember him saying goodbye, they both remember, sorry, saying goodbye to him that evening while he sat in his gazebo, but didn't know that it would be the last time they would have seen him. Auntie Lisa remembers Mr. Mackenzie for his jokes and infectious laughter. She said he would joke about her not being able to control the children and would often tell her, don't let the children mind your enemies because I will not be going to live my house with you. Auntie Nikki remembers Mr. Mackenzie for his pleasantries on her arrival at school each morning. He would ask her the same question every morning. If 
it was her birthday. She would find this question so funny while she replied, yes it was. To Uncle Bobby, which was our only male staff, Mr. Mackenzie was a people person who always spoke to him with respect, no matter the nature of the conversation. Auntie Cheryl remembers Mr. Mackenzie as a helpful and kind person who would always check up on her, asking if everything was okay because he had not heard her voice all morning. To Mrs. Nolan, Mr. Mackenzie was very observant and would often visit her classroom. As usual, asking if things were okay, but was also looking around for something to fix. To Auntie Kaya, which is me, Sir, as I call him, was my second boss, my political analyst, my chef, my shoemaker, and the list goes on. Sir was always there for me and was often willing to share a kind word, advice, a helping hand, and most times a joke. I was responsible for selling his BSA men's food tea party tickets. And of course, I would ensure that everyone bought a ticket, whether they wanted to or not. On my arrival at school each morning, he would be the first person I would see on the compound. And as usual, he would greet me, Good morning, Auntie Kay. And then he would ask me, What do you mean on my property, so early, miss? You know that this is my property, no? Of course, I would start to laugh, and he would say, don't mind me, Auntie Kay. You know that it's a joke I am with. I remember a particular morning, he asked me, Auntie Kay, is how your face looks like? I told him I was hungry because I was running late and didn't get a chance to make breakfast. Of course, I got a short lecture on the importance of having breakfast in the mornings. A few minutes after we spoke, he came to me and asked, A few seconds he came back and asked, Auntie Kay, did he break? I again replied, yes sir, and he left. To my surprise, he came again and asked, Auntie Kay, you need to make to go to it. At this point, I could barely answer to how I was dying of laughter. I said, yes sir, and he went back to the kitchen. So now, I was patiently waiting on my sandwich. I heard Sir calling me again, so I got ready to collect my sandwich. No sandwich. He asked, Auntie Kay, you eat, you eat cucumber? Well, at this point, I was laughing so hard and could barely answer. I told him yes, and he went away. Finally, I got my lovely egg and cucumber sandwich. I can't now safely say I really did not like the cucumber in the sandwich. However, I ate my sandwich because I knew it was made with love. I am sure Sir could have asked all those questions at once, but knowing him, he made a joke out of any and every situation. I would never forget that early morning of April 28, 2021, when Mrs. Mackenzie called to tell me that Sir was no longer with us. I was so shocked because I honestly was not expecting to hear that. However, I will always remember the afternoon of April 16, 2021, which was the last time I saw Sir. I remember him being in good spirits as we had our usual little conversation, and of him laughing heartily at Mr. Bowie's slippers, which for him was not man slippers, but a woman slippers. We had a good laugh about it. I then left telling him to take care and that I would see him soon. For me, soon will never come. The Happy Hours family has lost an assertive, eloquent, disciplined, helpful, and a very kind father figure. Uncle Brian now has issues to fill. Uncle Brian 
Friends Community. This is Monica McKenzie. Children Andrea, Tina, Ryan, grandchildren, ladies and gentlemen, I want to also recognize Council Freeman for Bail Food Division. I'm thankful for having been afforded the opportunity to say a few words. But how can it be a few words? When you have known this man almost all your entire life. Because I was just conversing with Councillor Freeman, and when we were going to St. Mary High School, Mackie was always there, Carl was always there, working with what was known to us then as telephone company of Jamaica. And now you know, known as Scale and Wireless our floor, TOJ was who we worked with. And one of the things that we recognized about him was his diligence to his work. Carl was a man who was very outgoing in the sense that you have seen and hear him. He was a quiet force. I want to express my condolences to you, Monica, and, and no one without you in putting on the program, the best friend part. Because that was who Carl was to. His family, his wife, his children were who he lived for and his life was about. And at St. Mary High School, we came into contact with his brother Val, who was part of our contemporary school as well. But over the years, Carl matured. We all mature as we get to go. That was not an idea. Carl matured into being a, a community man in addition to being a family man. A man who his best friend could rely on, who his family could rely on, who has, as his daughter just said a while ago, would be the man to pick her up at the airport, would be her taxi man around the place. One whose grandchildren and his children could console in and find comfort in speaking to him. And it came as a surprise to me, and I'm sure to his family, when he made the transition. Because it's not like that Carl was ill from any condition which contributed to his death. But God knows best. And in this very difficult time, Monica, I want to applaud you for how you dealt with it. How you recognize that even though Carl was gone, his power was the way he wanted to go. And that you accepted it for what it was because of your then belief and faith in God. And that the hope that you will see him again. And that is what is comforting about. So today, as we celebrate his life, even though in the midst of some amount of missing and anger is passing and the fact that he's no longer here and let us celebrate him for who he was let us celebrate him for the life he lived and let us celebrate him for the exemplary life that he gave not only to his family but to all those around him may his soul rest in peace and let me pay attention Remembrance for the late Carl Brian McKenzie, Ducky, Carl B, Daddy Mac, Mr. Mac. It was on the 15th day of September 1950 when this angel of a baby entered the gates of his world. His elated parents, Peter and Marion McKenzie, Named him Carl Bryan. And as he told me later on, that name Ducky came about because they thought he would eventually become a doctor. However, he had other plans for his life. Carl was the fourth of five children, four brothers and one sister, whom he loved dearly. Maisie, 
and they would listen to it every day and try to get the moves that they were doing on YouTube. Carl was a real friend of Jesus. He loved him and he loved his neighbors as he, as he loved himself. He wished well for his friends and by extension people around him. He was happy when they were successful in anything that they put their hands to. And he likes to encourage the less fortunate in any way that he could. He would encourage especially younger people to do something worthwhile with their lives. He loved going to church and was a member of the BSA Men's School and got along well with his church brothers and sisters. He would always tell us at home that he was not afraid to die. As a matter of fact, he always said that people want to go to heaven, but they were afraid to die. Carl proved he was not afraid to die on the 28th day of April when he was called to have a service. And as if he were a child, he closed his eyes slowly to sink into a warm dream. The peace came over him instantly and there was no noise, no space between him and the stars. There was only silence and the rhythmic beat of his heart began to get silent. And now he knew he had already arrived. It mattered little to his genesis. He knew himself when he was alive and knew who he belonged to. And that was enough. And so he said, because he was not afraid to die. He leaves the hand to preserve his beautiful memories, his dear wife and friend, Monica. Daughters Karen, Andrea, Carl Bryan. Daughters in law and son in law. Grandchildren Andrea Moy, Tevon Dimitri, Devante, CJ, Dominic, Kalia, Brianna, Zachary, Tajon, and one great grandson, Ricardo. We pray that the soul will rest in peace and that the light of the soul will shine upon him in Jesus' name. nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to the same Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath of the everlasting heart. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the remains of our brother Paul for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father 
the giver of life, that he raised into perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember the for you this day our brother Paul. Fresh as the morning, 
as sure as the sunrise. The Lord is all I have, and so I put my trust in Him. The Lord is good to everyone who trusts in Him. So it is best for us to wait in patience, to wait for Him to save us. The Lord is merciful and will not reject us forever. He may bring us sorrow, but His love for us is sure and strong. He takes no pleasure in causing grief and pain. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Where death is your portrait, death is for the hurt of sin. 
and sing that is forth from the Lord. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Indeed, myself, the very Reverend 
Canon Barnes and his dear wife, we offer our sincere condolences to the family at this time, Sister Monica and the rest of the family. We serve a God who is good all the time. A God who pours out his love for all of us, as are reminded by St. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm going to use some words from Psalm 23 for us this morning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me in the quiet waters. Let's bow there. Father, we give you thanks for life. We thank you for the life of our own car. And as we come on God to hear from you today, may the words of my lips and the meditation of all of us be accepted in your sight. All our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We are gathered in this form not only to grieve the death of Carl, but we're here to give thanks to God for his life among us and for his life now with God. We are gathered not only to mourn. But to give God thanks for how full life was when Carl was in our midst. We have gathered together not only to consider the shortness and uncertainty of human life, but we have gathered to establish that right relationship with our God. We have gathered here today because our lives were touched in some way by Carl Brian Mackenzie. And those of us who are here, and among others who wish to be here, we are his family. We are his friends. We are his Our memories will continue to live on in our hearts. And those memories will become more precious and highly valued in our future. Each of us could give a testimony of how highly our thoughts of power are. It is shown here by your presence today. To the members of his family, especially to his best friends, we know that he's okay. Our sympathy and prayers are with you at this time of loss. But we also remember that Carl will lead us all as friends and co workers and church family as such our lives. The question can be asked, how do we explain the events of the last few moments that have led us to this point in time? There may not be an explanation for where some of the things we deal with in life comes from. Where does disease come from? Why are healthy people affected? Yes, we can know a few things. We can know because the Bible says in James 4 verse 14, What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then you vanish. We know that everything could have been done for Paul, was done for him. He had the care of his doctors and nurses. 
He had the love of his family who was with him to the very end. How then can you describe a person's life in such a time? It's impossible to tell it all. But Carl's life would be described as successful by any standard of the word. Maybe not the wealthiest. Maybe not the most famous. Not the oldest. But my brothers and sisters, Carl had other qualities that prepared him better for the journey he has taken into eternity. Life was good to Carl. He had a good long life on this earth. Some persons have long life. Many may have lived as long. But we can be thankful to Almighty God for the length of life he enjoyed. And it made life so successful. Our brother Carl was successful, you know why? Because he had a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He made Jesus Christ his Redeemer. And so those of us who have come to share in this memorial service, we too need to understand that we can be successful, but we need to establish that relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is the recipient of some of the greatest promises in the world. Revelation 2 verse 10 tells us, Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. To him who overcomes, I'll give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Revelation 14 verse 13. Then I heard a voice from him say, Right, blessed are the dead who died to the Lord for no one, yes, says the Spirit. They will rest from their labor, for they'll take with them the records of their deeds. Nothing, my brothers and sisters, can give more comfort. Nothing can give more hope for a family during times like these than to know that their loved one died in the Lord. Carl gave his life to the Lord. He put his faith in Jesus Christ. He put his Lord and his baptism and he lived faithfully to that commitment. He came from a family with a Christian heritage. And I know he wants that for all of us. He wants it for his family and his friends, dedication to the Lord's work, and it comes in some ways. Brother Carl was successful because of his love for his family. He and his wife fulfilled their vow till death was part. She was a faithful companion, the best friend, supportive, to the end. Carl was dedicated to his work. One last thing I would note in Carl's life. He was a man of integrity. A man of character. He was a person who worked hard in a quiet way. We know that. He truly touched many people in so many positive ways. And so the third third son, which has been one of the most treasured passages in all of the Holy Scriptures. This psalm is among the most familiar. So much that even people who are not religious or very knowledgeable scripture recognize the words of this psalm. Because they are among the most comforting, often being quoted in times of trouble and in loss. And almost have been read when we gather most times. 
for our funeral service. There are many images in this song, and they all have a particular meaning for us. And I want to go at verse 4 this morning. Because the first thing I want to share with us and with the family that comes to my mind, verse 4, which says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, you are rather on your staff, they come to me. It would be so wonderful if God would simply promise to us that we would never go through difficult times, isn't it? But we all go through great and terribly difficult times in our lives. And God has constantly warned us of these dangers and difficulties in His world. Second Peter in his first letter, first Peter 4 verse 12, reminds us, dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trials you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, so that you may be overjoyed with his glory, which is revealed to all of us. The Bible certainly tells us that there is going to be difficult times in your life. You cannot get away from that. And Psalm 23 voices such a warning. It does not say, no friends, that God will keep you from danger. But rather describe that there will come times and they come for all of us when we feel like we are walking through dark, dangerous valley, a valley of the shadow of death. But what the word of God does not make very clear is that as we move through those times, God is with us. God comforts us. God sustains us in our times of difficulties. As we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will not fear no evil, for your rod and your staff shall comfort me. So we are sure of God's comfort and God's sustaining help when we meet these times of difficulties in our lives. The valley of the shadow of death is literally the valley of the deep shadow. And this verse is literally when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it is not if, but when. It is certain. Today, maybe part of one of the walks of the valley of deep shadows for you. But tell you what. We are assured that our God is here. Our God is here to comfort us if we call upon Him. Early in the psalm, you notice that David spoke of God in the third person. You see that? What does he say? He makes me lie down. He leads me. He will refresh me. But when David enters into the valley of the shadow of death, he changes to the second person by saying, You, God, are with me. Open the song I'm trying to say, friends. You, God, are with me. Before David had spoken about God, but now he is speaking to God. He says, your rod, your staff will comfort me. You prepare a table before me. You anoint my head. In recent days, Carl has passed through the valley of the shadow of death. But he was never alone. And when we pass through the valley, we will never be alone because we 
we have a relationship with God, we are connected to God. God was never alone. Not only did he have his best friend, his family, he had the Spirit of God at his side, like a shepherd who kept close watch over him. He faced the valley and faith and bravery. He had an uncommon sense of peace and assurance as he passed through the valley of the shadow of death. We heard it. Peace and assurance that comes from a relationship with our God. You know, friends, the fear of death is the greatest of all fears. It is universal to all people. But listen to this. The one who has a personal relationship with the Lord does not need to be afraid. We are assured that the Lord walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death. We are assured that He is there to comfort us when we call upon Him. The second image I want to share and I call your attention. Verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You are not my head at all, and my cup overflows. The Bible speaks of a time when all of God's children and joy is eternal here. And with this image, we make the journey from the pastor to the palace. You understand what I'm saying, friends? With this image, we make our journey from the pastor to the palace, God's palace. He's no longer just a good shepherd, but he's now our gracious host. We are told in the presence of God, all hostility and strife are gone. Brother Paul is now enjoying the peace. Jesus promised, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. He said he had gives a time in the future when all of them will be together in heaven. And all their earthly conflicts will disappear. We are reminded in Revelation 21 1 4. When I saw the new heaven and the new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, there was no longer any sea. I saw the only city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautiful dressed for her husband. And I heard a voice, a loud voice, from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men. He will live with them. They will be his people. God himself will be with them and to be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. No more mourning or crying. No more pain. Because the other things are passed away. God is with his people and we are with God. And then finally, the third image which I share today is this. Verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will walk. Dwell in the house of the Lord when forever. You know, friend, not everybody can say that. Not everybody can say I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. They cannot say it with that kind of assurance and boldness. It is those who have that personal relationship with the shepherd. Beyond this life, is the Father's house that Jesus spoke of. A place that we refer to 
as in heaven. Jesus says in St. John 14, Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in Him. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself. That where I am there, you may be also. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Do we know that way? There's a song that we sing sometimes. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. Could you, could you try that for us? I know where I'm going. Good 
goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of God forever. Goodbye, my friend. Rest sweetly in the arms of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray that God will continue to give strength to his family, especially his best friend. And so may his soul rest in peace. And like a picture, shine upon him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. Let us together confess the faith of our baptism as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your peace. Hear us, Lord. May all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection Die to sin and rise to the newness of life. And may we with him pass through the grave and gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Hear us, Lord. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Hear us, Lord. Grant your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Hear us, Lord. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that cast in their sorrows on you they may know the consolation of your love hear us all grant courage and faith to those who are bereaved that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Lord Jesus, we commend to you today our brother Carl, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death, 
and the occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way, and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of the age. Hear us, Lord. Father of all, we pray to you for power and for all those who we love but see no longer. Grant them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon you. May he and all faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. We bring before you, Lord Jesus, the family of our brother Carl. We pray that you use this occasion of boring to knit them together with bonds that cannot be broken. And in confidence, we join them in the family prayer of your church. Let us all pray together the prayer that the Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from me, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
children farewell to a car. Give rest to Christ your servant call with your sins. Your sorrow and pain are no more. Not a sign, but life everlasting. You are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The rest of Christ, your servant, with your sins, your sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. Let us commend our brother Carl to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant, O serving Lord Christ, from all evil, set him free from every bond that he may rest with all your sins in the eternal habitation, where the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Carl. Acknowledge your seat your sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the heart of your mercy. In the blessed rest of everlasting peace. The glorious company of your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Together we know the Nocturnities. Lord, our let thy servant depart in peace. According to thy word. For when I receive thy salvation. With us prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated. Session of the year. 